Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And as you... <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to another video. As you guys can tell by the title, today's video is going to be a little bit different from our normal vlogs. We're always out home decor shopping or doing something around the house. Today we're going to get to know each other. I noticed that I have over 2,000 new subscribers. So I just wanted to sit down and like talk to you guys, let you guys get to know me. I wanted today's video to be like we're sitting on the couch talking to each other. So y'all are there. I'm here. We own our couch. The link for the couch is going to be down below in the description box. So it was so funny because I did get one comment on YouTube. They were like, I like your videos because you get straight to the point. So when it comes to this video, we're going to get straight to the point. So I got my questions pulled up on my phone. And I wanted to start off with my name. My name is Jacole. I am 30 years old. I just turned 30 in February. So I'm new to the 30s club. All my friends are 30 now. I'm finally 30. We are the new adults. We we don't take nothing serious, y'all, but we are the new adults. Like, that's, that's the era we're in. It's so funny because every time we're about to, like, have, like, a Friendsgiving or something, we're all like, oh, what are we going to eat? Not realizing that we're grown to the point we have to cook a dish and bring it, girl. That'd be so hilarious because we're on like websites saying like, oh, we can cater here, cater there. We're like, no, we're going to start cooking. So yeah, we're the new, we're the new adults. I'm apologizing in advance because we're still working on it. But um, I'm from Alabama and I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to stop right there because every time people hear that, you know, somebody's from Alabama, they always have like these crazy scenarios or whatever y'all want to call it because they feel like if you're from alabama you are very country um we ride on horses <laughs> what we ride on horses like it's they don't feel like we're a normal state because we're down south or whatever like we i don't date my cousin i don't date my brother like we don't we don't do that type of stuff so i guess i should just clear the air about alabama from my perspective like I always try to tell people that we are kind of like Georgia, like Atlanta. Everybody love Atlanta. We are like Atlanta, but it's more slow. Like we have the same restaurants, the same vibes. Like, you know, it's just like we're like a baby Atlanta at the same time. So, yeah, like we don't sit at home with straw hats on at our front porch. I don't know. It's crazy. So when y'all think of Alabama... If y'all younger, like y'all could think of Flo Millie. Flo Millie is not country. She, you know, she a regular girl. So yeah, I, I just wanted to say that about Alabama, y'all, because y'all be doing us wrong. We are pretty cool. And when people come to like Birmingham, I think they actually like it. You know, it's pretty cool, laid back. Um, Huntsville kind of the same way, but yeah, enough of that. So somebody asked me, how are you selling into your new home? My home is coming together very well, and I am enjoying it because it's like, it's always something to do, um, you know, just around the house. Like, if it's buying a new piece of decor, a new piece of furniture, it's always something. And I feel like it's exciting. And now spring is coming, so I want to, like, get my patio and stuff together. So it's like, it's a big ball of excitement right now for me because... I just don't feel like I'm gonna get bored with it and I'm just so excited to bring you guys along the journey of decorating my house and just showing you guys the ups and downs of home ownership because I will say the beginning of 2024 I've been seeing like a lot of posts about people um you know their mortgage and stuff is going up because people are always praising home ownership compared to renting but they all they both come with like the pros and cons or whatever so whenever i run into some situations like that i want to let you guys know because i want to be as very i want to be as transparent as i can when it comes to like owning a home it's not always going to be like fun decorating and stuff like that and like i just want to you know let you guys know the real deal about owning a house but so far i have not run into any problems um my neighborhood is still new so i did see a post on instagram and your mortgage could possibly go up because with it being new construction they're still building so the land has not really been like assessed for taxes accurately and as they keep building of course it's going to go up which could make like your property tax go up and 
all that stuff kind of factors into your monthly mortgage so like that's the reason why your mortgage mortgage could go up it's not really like the actual mortgage is the other like escrow and homeowners insurance all that type of stuff is going up and y'all they love talking about inflation i don't don't go up on my prices because no inflation especially when it comes to my car insurance y'all i will leave real quick i will go get me a new quote every six months because i'm not paying on no inflation costs like i'm just gonna leave that's just me don't be like me I'm just cheap. I know that. So I got off track already, y'all. And I got a comment. Somebody was like, oh, I love your videos because you get straight to the point. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to try to stick to the schedule and stay on point, y'all. I thought that was so funny. So someone asked me the process of building a home. Um, I guess it was like asking, like, probably is it hard to build a home or whatever. So I did want to talk on that. So... When I found my home, they were already, like, in the process of building it. It's not like I built it from, like, the bottom up. Like, you know, pick my land and watch them do the foundation. I didn't do any of that. So, I came in, like, a month before they were finished with it. So, when I came in, like, they did not... I can't really remember. I think they had the walls up. But they weren't painted. The floors weren't in. The countertops weren't in. Like, nothing was really in. So, I didn't really have much say-so on picking the color of the walls. I didn't have that uh, opportunity because they were already halfway done with the end. I picked my home because I love the countertops that were in here. So, this is what made me go ahead and go with it. And, yeah, like... Maybe in my next home, well, I'm not going to say maybe. In my next home, I will be building it, like, from the ground up so y'all can see that whole process. But let's just go back. So, it was October, and I always tell this story because I'm a person, I live in the country, everybody know that. But going to the grocery store, this, this one particular day I was going to the grocery store, and I'm normally always getting on the freeway to go to the store because it's on the next exit, but, like, it's kind of a long streetway. But this particular day, I took the streetway to the grocery store, and I saw that they were building houses over here, like, where I am now. And I just thought it was so crazy. I was like, wait, they're building houses over there? So... I was already kind of in the mindset of, like, when I turned 30, I wanted to, like, own a home. That that was something, like, for my 30th birthday that I wanted to give to myself. And when I saw these, like, that was kind of like my sign. It was October. My birthday was in February. I had a couple, you know, months to find something that I wanted to own and enjoy. So, um, I remember riding by here, and I... Um, told my grandparents and like they came and looked at it with me so they were still doing construction on all of them so we came into this one we went into like a couple of them over there I didn't really like them because it was like small things that like I, that could have been changed but that could have been changed but I didn't want to like come in the door changing stuff so I came into this one and I found like everything that I wanted I didn't have to change anything to the point I could just move in and enjoy it, you know, because I see where some people will buy a house and like they come right in the door remodeling to like build equity and stuff. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it, especially if it's new construction. New construction is supposed to be like something that you really enjoy, you know. So, yeah, um, it was October. Um, I ended up doing like the pre-approval around November, like the first week of November, because I remember, I think it was like November 5th. Yeah, I did my pre-approval, got with the lender and stuff. So she did tell me about uh, quite a few loans that I could get. I could get like the FHA loan, the conventional loan, or um, USDA loan. USDA is when you live in a rural city and like I guess the government would give you money to, like, build a home in a rural city so it can come up or whatever. So, that was my first option that I wanted to do. And the builder, another thing with new construction, like, the builders are, like, throwing out incentives and stuff like that. You know, they'll pay your closing costs, um, stuff like that. So, with the USDA loan, um, my builder would pay closing costs and my down payment 
which would have been like 3% or like 5% or whatever, that could go to buying down my interest rate. Or it was, I think it was vice versa. Maybe like I had to buy my own, pay my own closing costs and the builder bought down my interest rate or something like that. So the interest rate would go from like 7 point, at the time it was like 7.7% to a 4%. And if you know, the interest rates are crazy right now. Like, the prices of houses is not bad. I'm going to say it's not too bad. But what make it worse is the interest rates. So, yeah, buying a home with a 4% interest rate every year goes up until, like, what it is today over five years. I hope this makes sense, y'all. I'm going to put, like, a link down below so y'all can see what I'm talking about. Because I played around with a whole bunch of, like, buy-down calculators and, like, mortgage payment calculators and stuff before I did this or whatever so yeah I did the pre-approval um I had already found the home that I wanted so I didn't have to go home shopping I just let her know the price of my loan or the price of the home that I wanted and you know stuff like that um I what happened was my builder came back and he was like hey I see that you're interested in this home Instead of this price, you know, I can sell it to you for this price. Like he came down like, I think it was like five or six thousand dollars, y'all. That is amazing. Like I didn't have to negotiate. I did not have to go through that part, which is I I was gonna go through that part of negotiating, but I didn't have to. So I, I felt like that was a sign. And another thing I started to do when I was in the whole process of like you know getting pre-approved, I was kind of like, I. I'm not going to say I was afraid, but, like, I was, I, I think I was afraid, y'all. I was afraid to own a home. Like, it was a lot of maintenance and a lot of things that come along with owning a home. Yes, it's cute and this and that, but I was just scared of, like, what I didn't know could happen. You know, I got to pay my mortgage, yeah. But it was just, like, I was scared. So, what I did was I started me a 21-day prayer journey. And I remember being at my grandparents' house and they had like this book. It was like a prayer book of Psalms. And like, it was just like from front to back, all like prayers. So I got that book and I just started like going hard for like 21 days, like praying, like, God, if that, if that home is for me, you know, send me a sign and let me know that it's for me. Because I was second guessing myself to the point, like I was going to talk myself out of getting a home, y'all, because I was so scared. And it's like... You would never go to the next level if you, like, don't overcome being scared. I'm about to cry right now. I'm just thinking about it because. Take me off. Cut the show. Okay, y'all, I'm back. I had to take a break because I got emotional. Like, I just never really sat down and thought about, you know, the whole process of me buying my home. And it's been months now. So, like. I just got a little emotional. So, yeah, I did, like, a 21-day prayer journey, and it consisted of me, like, reading my Bible every single day for 21 days. And when I would get done reading the Bible, I would um, say a prayer. Like, it could be something so simple, like, you know, God, thank you for blessing me each and every day. You know, send me a sign, and it's just like, or send me guidance or something along the line of, like, let me know that I'm on a path that you have for me like this is to god like just let let him him letting you know that you're on the right path that he have for you or whatever because and sometimes we feel like we're doing life alone and we're doing it all by ourselves but in, in reality we're not so yeah that's what i did so i just i honestly just started the prayer journey again a couple weeks ago but i switched it up this time i got the bible my friends i think Three of my friends have this Bible, so I always um, saw it on Instagram and stuff like that. But this is the She Reads Truth Bible, and y'all, it is the bomb. I'm gonna put the description. Uh, I'm gonna put the link down in the description box. But yeah, so when I started my second prayer journey, I just literally opened up my Bible and went to Psalm one more time because it got me through my first prayer journey. So I wanted to get me through my next one. So yeah, y'all, I am on um, verse. I'm on chapter 40 now. So I read like two a day, at least two. And, um, you know, spend about 10, 15 minutes with God every morning. And um, after, you know, I, like I said, after I read it, I'll go ahead and like say a prayer or whatever. So, yeah, like I feel like it worked for me. So it, I'm sure it'll work for y'all. If you ever like get into a phase in your life where you just don't know where you want to go or what you want to do next, you know, 
do a 21 day prayer journey I, i'm gonna live by it i'm i'm gonna keep doing it because honestly y'all it was 21 day prayer journey but i kept going like i was locked in i just kept doing it do y'all know i was on like day 80 something to the point i just stopped counting this is part of my daily routine now you know so yeah i kind of got off track i'm so sorry but like by my home only came because i did the 21 day prayer journey so i had to throw that part in there um somebody said how do you stay motivated if you know me you know that i'm a person that like i have all the best ideas but i have a problem with being consistent i don't have a problem with being motivated for real i have a problem with being consistent and like sticking to doing the same thing and seeing the results in the end so um, I don't think y'all know, but I had a boutique. I, I still have it. Like, it's still up and running or whatever. Still getting orders. But, yeah, I had a boutique for the last eight years, I think. And I was doing, like, on and off. Like, I would sell clothes, stop, sell clothes, stop. Like, it was to the point, like, I went viral on Facebook. And I had, like, thousands of orders within a week. Like, business has always been, like, fun and good. But I feel like... Um, with me selling clothes, I felt like I got to a point where I started gaining weight and I just wasn't feeling myself no more. So like, it kind of like drew me to like not being motivated with my business and like not being consistent with my business. So I just, I kind of like gave it a break and it's just like, it didn't feel like my passion, like. You know how, like, sometimes you do things and you feel like, okay, yeah, this is my calling. So, I didn't really feel like it was really my calling anymore because, like, I was do I would do it, stop. I would do it for, like, spring and summer and when winter come, I don't do it. You know, I, I didn't want that no more because it's a lot of money that goes into, like, buying inventory, keeping your website online. It's a lot of work. So, this year, I was just like, you either going to do it or you're not. You know, it's no more buying a few pieces, posting it, going missing for six months. I'm not doing that anymore. So I have decided to close out my business and, you know, I'm going to give my inventory to someone who wants to start a business because I had some pretty good pieces. I got label printers, actual labels to go into the printer. I got mailers. I have so much stuff that I could just give away to someone who wants to be consistent and start a business. But being motivated is really not a issue for me. It's just like staying consistent. And in order to do great things, you have to be consistent. And another, I will say to be motivated, I do like the girls I follow on Instagram, like with me transitioning to being consistent on YouTube now, I do follow a lot of YouTube girls. Like I watch YouTube like reality TV. Like y'all may watch like Real Housewives of Atlanta and stuff like that. I watch YouTube, like especially on Sundays. Like I would sit there and watch a vlog from all my girls on Sunday, just all down the couch. So, yeah, like, I just, what I want to, like, if I want to do something, I'm going to follow people that has already taken that path and, like, on that journey to doing what I want to do so I can learn from them. And, you know, that motivates me to keep going, keep going because, like, if they can do it, I can do it. You know, it's not unattainable, you know? So, yeah, and, like, that just come with everything in life like whatever you want to do just like get in the room with those people like you don't even have to get in the room with them like get on their social media see what they're doing on a daily basis so you like you can get into their routine and like knowing what they're doing you know so yeah that's that's basically um it about being motivated you know okay y'all i'm back my camera went crazy y'all it got hot so i had to take a break so we've covered um settling into my home building a home staying motivated 21 day prayer journey and the next one is where do i see myself in 10 years so as i told y'all i just turned 30 so in 10 years i will be 40 so i've been a corporate girl when it comes to my career i've been a corporate girl for the last six years it'll be seven years this year so with my job i can retire after 25 years of service so i will retire when i'm 48 years old which is 18 years from now and my goal is to like go ahead and get married have kids and like just start that whole 
second journey of my life so like when it do come time for me to retire i could start my second part of my life and you know how like you enjoy your 20s like doing what you want to do your 30s is more so like being a mom being a wife like just transitioning into a being like a whole adult i y'all i'm a whole adult now like i'm an adult so yeah that's gonna just consist of like like i said being a mom being a wife you know, doing things like that. And my, my overall my overall journey is to start my real estate portfolio. So the backstory or like why I got my home was because I told y'all when I turned 30, I wanted to have something under my belt. Like I wanted to own something. So um, me and my boyfriend, we kind of like got on the same track of like, you know, I buy my home. And he's going to buy his home. So when we actually like do get married and like start having kids, we're going to like build our own home to the point like the homes that we had separate, we're going to rent those out. So like that will be two houses in our real estate portfolio already. So that's kind of like talks that we have about marriage and like, you know, moving forward and things because I told him like, and this goes to anybody like, before you make that step with the the person that you want to be with, y'all need to have, like, some type of blueprint or, like, path that you want to go down. And granted, like, you can, like, make all these plans and, like, all of it don't come true. But, like, you want to know, like, that y'all on the same page when y'all doing certain things. Because I had already told him um, when I grew up, like, growing up, my grandparents, they own condos down in Panama City Beach, Florida. So, like... I basically grew up in Florida, like, being around my grandparents, um, rent out these townhouses to people, and I've always liked that. I always enjoyed it. Like, that's another side of a business that I would want to do. It's kind of like, not like a product business like I have now with, like, my boutique or whatever. So, yeah, um, people always went on vacation, and when my grandparents' unit weren't rented out, like, we would go down there. So, say, like, if it's a free Friday and Saturday, we would go down, like, Friday morning, and then Sunday we would leave because somebody else is shaking in. So, I always, like, felt like that was cool. And, you know, that's, like, um, a way of building generational wealth. And I like, that's probably, like, the topic of the year for the last couple years on social media. Everybody want to build generational wealth. So, I feel like that's a thing, you know, and people going to always have to have someone to live. So renting out homes is like, you know, it's a good thing nowadays. And um, with me building my home, um, furnishing it how I want it for like the first year, just enjoying it for the first year. Then after that, I could put on a market to rent it out because um, for a lot of like, depending on what loan you got, you have to um, stay in your home for 12 months before you can rent it out. So yeah, that's just the path that I'm going down. And, you know, we're both going down that path. So just... When the time come, you know, we'll have two real estate, real estate properties already. So I'm excited about that. And I still look on Zillow and Realtor to look at like um, other properties to like rehab and stuff like that. But me personally, I'm a person that like, I will buy a home, like the home could be on the market for $60,000 and you have to put in like $100,000 worth of work. I'm the person that would come in and buy it after the investor has already came in and like remodel it. Put in new floors, new countertops and stuff like that because I feel like finding a contract, I'm not going to say it's hard because I have not done a lot of research in it, but it's just like, I'm not ready for that yet. I want thing, I want to get some things that are like, ready to like move forward to the next step like if i go ahead and buy the home for like 160 after the investor went in and like did all that work i can go ahead and put it on the market like the next day and like get a renter a tenant in there the next day compared to like going through the whole process of like buying all the stuff and not finding a consistent contract contractor it's a lot that goes into it y'all so yeah in the next 10 years i want to be um a real estate investor i want to be on my journey to retire from my job so yeah like i really don't have any extravagant plans y'all i just still want to like continue to enjoy like a good life you know i it's just been real cool i don't want to be a 
celebrity, all this stuff. You know, some people have like these fairy tale. I'm not gonna say fairy tale, but they have like these crazy things that they want to do in ten years. Yeah, I just want to continue to travel, be a wife, have kids, own my dream home. Well, like actually build my home. I think that's gonna be like the most exciting thing for me in the next couple of years because it's gonna happen before ten years. You know, the whole process is like finding the perfect lot um, to build your home, like just starting it from the ground up. Like, I feel like that's going to be a good phase in my life. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I think that was all the questions that I had. Yeah, so... Yeah, so I, I guess that pretty much wraps up this video. So I hope I did good on this video, y'all. And if I did not, let me know down in the comments. I'm shame. <laughs> because I would talk about one topic and I would get all off of it or whatever, y'all. But the main takeaway I wanted y'all to know about this video is get in your Bible. You can be in your bag, but get in your Bible too, y'all. Um, start your 21-day prayer journeys and... If you have some questions about it, or you don't know where to start. Like, let me down, let me know down in the comments, and we could talk about it because nobody told me to like get in your Bible, start here, start there. I just did it. Like, I found that um, prayer book at my grandparents' house. I told y'all about, and I just started reading, y'all. So, if y'all want to do it together, I'm more than happy to like start a a prayer group or something with y'all on instagram but something to keep y'all motivated because i don't want you to feel like you're doing life alone and another thing i wanted to tell y'all like i'm not this overly holy person i'm like i'm not a person that go to church every sunday every wednesday for bible study i'm not that person so i don't want to feel like i'm pushing something on you guys but that's just something that works for me you know get in your bible stay consistent do everything you want to do. Like, make those goals and crush them. Another thing I wanted to tell y'all before I end it is I started um, making yearly vision boards on my iPad. So, I went to Canva and I made me a vision board. I'm going to put it on the screen, too, because I don't know if y'all going to be able to see it here. But I made a vision board every freaking year. And it changes every year because I want different things every year. Like, I may want the same things, but it may grow a little bit more. So, I find pictures on Pinterest that goes along with what I want to do. And another good thing that I did was I saw this on TikTok. Um... I found this girl. She did like a bingo board for her 2024 goals. So, I did the same thing, y'all. So, like, you go... You can go on Pinterest and not Pinterest. You can go on Canva and type in like um, bingo board. So here is what my bingo board looked like. I wish y'all could see it, but yeah. So I will, when I mark something on my board, I'm going to take the heart and then I'm going to drag it and take it like playing bingo with your goals. But that's another way to stay motivated and stay like on top of your goals and make sure you're doing everything you need to do. And, you know, it's not going to be perfect. You know, just find what works for you. And, yeah, y'all, I really, I'm so proud of myself because it's, like, my fourth YouTube video within, like, the last month. And I'm just so excited because I always wanted to do YouTube. I always feel like I had a passion for it, especially when it comes to, like, traveling and stuff. But look like home decor is really where it's at for me. And I'm so excited because I love home decor and I just love it. And I'm so glad that you guys like it as well. So, yeah, y'all, that is it for this video. Let me know if, how y'all liked it down in the comments. And if I did not answer all the questions, put them down in the comments and I can answer them in the comments, y'all. Because I I ramble all over the place. I'm going to let y'all know that right now. And if you want to own a home and you don't, if you have any questions for me, like, just put them down in the comments. I will answer them for y'all as best as I can. And if you own a home and you got some, like, details for me to know please put them down in the, um in the comments because that's something i want to know like we're literally in this journey together y'all and maybe your comment will help somebody else that's watching this video so yeah 2024 we're helping each other we stand consistent we are getting in our bible you can be in your bag and in your bible so just do it all so yeah y'all that wraps up this video see y'all later bye